My name is Tony Hodge. Welcome to Conversations About Mining and Society. So welcome to my conversation with Professor Rick Valenta. Rick, you are leading a cross-cutting theme that's about accessing critical resources. Now, you have a particular name. Why is this important? Why are you doing this on top of everything else? The main focus of that program came about because we were going through a process in early 2017 where some of the other senior leadership team um, were discussing initiatives around some of the, the key problems that we're, we're facing the mining industry. And, and, um, and one that we all seem to agree on was this concept of, of complex ore bodies. The, you know, the world's population is continuing to increase as countries um, you know, advance in terms of their um, you know, in terms of their development, the way China has and the way India is doing now, um, their consumption of most of the world's critical metals is going to increase. And, and at the same time, we're in this situation where, where um, discovery rates just aren't keeping up. And so the deposits that we're going to have to focus on are the ones that could potentially be accessible if we understood how to unlock them. I mean, the interesting thing for me is that um, the idea that I had in my mind of what those problems were going to be at the start was quite a bit different to, to how it turned out. I'm not a mineral processing guy. I'm not a mining guy. I'm a geology guy. And so my thought was, well, um, you know, I've been involved in a, lot of, in, in a lot of developments in various different places where I knew that social challenges were important. Maybe 20, 25 percent probably are going to be ones that were would have otherwise been able to be developed but they've you know they've got social or environmental problems that are stopping them from being developed but what we actually found when we looked at undeveloped ore bodies with the, was that over 75% of them were actually in a very significant way held up by by things by challenges that were non-technical that were related to um, permitting or that were related to social unrest or resistance from communities or that were related to um, to environmental barriers. What that's meant is that as time has gone on with this, with this project, as we've carried out an analysis of undeveloped ore bodies, we've sort of been slowly moving around the focus and research towards, towards those things. How much can we strengthen the capacity of technical people to be more effective at working on that relationship interface, which is so critical to accessing these ore bodies? I, I think that is... I think that is absolutely critical. It's, um, you know, I, I guess I can speak from my personal experience on that. You know, when I first started getting involved in this, you know, what we're calling sort of cross, cross-disciplinary programs, I think at the start of the interaction, for example, with the Center for Social Responsibility and Mining people, they probably thought, oh, there's this geologist who's going to be working with us. He's, you know, uh, God knows what sort of view he's going to bring to this. But, but I guess what I tried to say was that I've been involved in, I've been at the front line of interaction with communities. What I found, particularly at an early stage of my career, I, you know, getting parachuted into Mexico, put in charge of an operation, put in charge of, a, of an exploration office where we had advanced projects, suddenly going down to, uh, to a, a, a community in Chiapas where Spanish was a second language and having to negotiate with these people to get access to, to carry out an exploration program. Um, and, and, to, and, and I guess allied to that, to, to be leading a group that was supposed to be carrying out a, a program to understand the, the context and needs of that community. And the needs were great. There's no doubt about that. Um, I had zero training, uh, zero, tra zero, absolutely zero training in that area, and I think that I, I don't think that that's something that was out of the ordinary. That there are exploration companies and and geologists all over the place that are that are at the front line. They're the they're the the first impression that that meets a community, and then they're the, if they make a discovery, then they're actually at the front line of that development, and usually they have. Usually they have zero training, but but the people who can do it, I think, do it quite well. But I think they would do it a lot better if they had training and, I guess, contextual understanding of the sort that they could have gained, for example, by taking some of the courses that's available. Yes, training would help. There's no doubt about that. 
but to do to to build effective relationships um, takes a different time frame. It the local people require time to understand. To, the capacity is there too, but they require time to understand. And in order to do that, there there is a requirement from the com from the company to put resources as a priority to that. So the decision making element of senior executive to be willing to put resources to that, to me, may in fact be a greater impediment to success than the kind of people or the capacity of the people that are at the front lines. No, that's right. We I don't mean, put the resources to that. Yeah, we, we, I mean, we do, but in a very... Cursory. In a very cursory way, exactly. So it's not, <clears throat> it's not something where where um, you know if you're yeah, if you're exploring if you're exploring a new property then then you have a you may not have an exact checklist but there is a, uh, an implied checklist of things that you're going to do you know you're not going to go in there and start drilling before you have your geological map and you've probably got a, ge a, a geological you've got a, a geochemical sampling program and you've probably done some geophysical surveys and you've put all those things together and and said well based on the analysis of all these things here's where I think we need to drill we don't do the same sort of thing in a social sense at all. It's very much, well, let's find out who, who's, who's in charge um, and let's talk to them and let's show them the paperwork that we have to go through, um, do the studies that we have to do, um, and basically try to, try to communicate with them to the extent that we need to in order to get permission to move on to the next stage. And, and I think that sometimes, yeah, I certainly think in my experience that sometimes that's done um, you know, probably not in the best way because it's it's uh, you know it's like like anything. No matter no matter what sort of company you're working with, you're under time pressure. I don't probably have enough understanding to say here are here are all the solutions, but I know that there are there are people here who do have the understanding that can contribute to that. You know, it's not just it's not just undeveloped ore bodies where something's going to have to change in order to gain access to them. It's going to be. Those new developments and the expansions, I think, are going to have to operate under a different, uh, uh, under a different framework. Let me bring us down from a, from high up to very focused. What's your next step in terms of your program right now? What's the, what's on the agenda for, a priority for you right now in terms of your next step or two? We all sort of agree that what we've identified with this analysis of a, of a broader range of risks as they apply to mining can be expanded in a whole series of different directions in terms of looking at, um, at looking at mine closure, for example. We're starting a process of putting together a, a database of potential mine closure risks in different areas in order to, to anal analyze that aspect of things. We're also expanding to different commodities. So that's just the, the database side of things, but we're doing it because we think it has the potential to have an impact on uh, gaining access to these undeveloped ore bodies in a way that that is going to be acceptable. So that's why we're tending to 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 um, divert or or at least focus a lot of the expenditure towards I guess two things. One is towards improvement of of sort of social uh, of the understanding of social performance and and potential changes in how we do that. So we're we have a number of of collaborative projects going on in that area. And then the technologies that we're looking at are all around areas where, where we see they have the potential to decrease footprints. So, so things like um, you know, high voltage pulse comminution where you're just eliminating a huge amount of the ore body before it ever makes it into the waste dump or the tailings or the tailing stem, or um, uh, you know, coarse particle flotation that allows you to um, more easily produce dry tailings as opposed to wet tailings and uh, co collaborative projects with companies aimed at trying to better understand um, water usage and reduction in water usage and that sort of thing. So, so uh, it's interesting, and it's the final comment or question I put to you, but early on we talked about exploration and the, f the first contact that is made. You've raised um, the work that your data system is now looking at closure, on the other hand, and we've zeroed in right now on a number of very real operational issues that can make a real difference. How do you see your cross-cutting theme weaving together with the other cross-cutting themes and quite frankly, with some of the traditional programs in SMI, which are so strong? Well, here's, here's an example, I guess, of how we're trying to do this. So as um, 
the complex ore bodies programs continued to to um, to progress, I formed the opinion that that the sort of technological aspects of of improvement in or, or reduction in tailings risk is a very important thing to do. Um, so. So, so that's one thing. But clearly, for mine life cycles, um, tailings is a very important thing as well. And for the Center for Mine Land Rehabilitation, tailings is a very important thing. In fact, they're the ones who've been active and have a have a, you know an, an enormous uh, kind of reputation and achievement in the tailing space already. Um, and there are a whole series of touch points from various different groups around the university and tailings. You know, as as I was sort of talking to all these people who are doing all these different things, I said, well, let's all get together for a day and everybody talk about their their skin in the tailings game and and let's try to do something that will that will not double up effort that will actually take advantage of everybody's experience in that space but i think that that's what cross cutting programs are all about is to try to is to try to identify those key issues and then to bring to bear all of the capability that we have in every different area so that we can find a way to then um, come up with a program that everybody owns. Yeah. Rick, thank you very much. The issues that you're, the, the ore bodies are complex. The issues you're dealing with are far from trivial. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Tony. <laughs>